she uh, was one of the founders of Sapphire, the Uppity Blues Women, which went on to have a performing and recording career. Uh, they were quite well known on the blues circuit uh, and disbanded amicably in 2009. Gay had a solo, a solo career uh, in tandem with uh, Sapphire's performing. And one of the things that she did on her, on her own in 2004 is she put out an album with a pianist. Scorsese put on a multi-part uh, uh, series on PBS called The Blues and it didn't mention these women and she was justifiably outraged. So she wanted to rectify that by, by putting out this album. So she knows about uh, uh, these women. So as we were going to talk about and how this was going to develop, she offered to uh, write verses about some of the women that we're gonna cover in a classic that came from the period called Tain Nobody's Business. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to bring Gay on. And once she's performed her song, we can begin our conversation. There is nothing I can do, nothing I can say. That folks don't criticize me, but I'm gonna do just what I want to anyway. I don't care if they all despise me. Call them independent. Call them wild. They did what they wanted and they shook it in style. Take nobody's business if they do, 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 do. Mighty strong medicine, they brought relief. Uh, now I'm gonna serve up some energies. I gotta keep it brief, cause ain't nobody's business what I do. Well, she's round and brown, short and squat, but everybody's wanting what Ma Rainey got. Uh, ain't nobody's business what her black bottom can do. Did I do that? Oh, I can't help myself. Start in Chicago and Europe all over the world. She didn't need no beards. She was my kind of girl. It ain't nobody's business what sassy, classy Alberta could do. Yeah, sweet mama string bean summed up her talent with ham. Broadway movies, TV, like biscuits with jam. Tain't nobody's business if her eye is on the sparrow too. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Big bold Bessie, the empress she was called. Salty, sad, sweet, or sexy, she could sing it all. And it ain't nobody's business. She sang any woman's blues. Well, these classic blues women, they had a different kind of life. No stay home baby making, dishwashing wife. No more slavery, that's what they would not do. No, 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 no slavery at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are my girls, those are my girls. Yeah, I'll tell you about the song, Robert. I was writing some verses to describe four classic blues women. Sweet Mama String Bean is Ethel Waters, and Bessie was the empress, and Ma Rainey was the mother of the blues. And who I'm going to be when I grow up is Alberta Hunter. I'll give you a really brief picture of my girls. Well, thank you. You did uh, you did it. You did an admirable job, and we'll hopefully we'll uh, we'll delve into each of those verses uh, during the course right. of the conversation. I want to show you my Ma Rainey T-shirt because I dress. All right. Oh, she's beautiful. And 
gorgeous. There are very few pictures of Bob Rainey. There are about five. Um, it, it was just, uh, it was partially uh, the times, you know, photography wasn't ubiquitous the way it is today. And it was also an indication of how um, uh, the, the, the culture that Ma Rainey came from, she was most famous and uh, uh, in the South. Uh, she, she sang a kind of a country blues that did not transition to a more sophisticated and urban style mm -hmm. that the other uh, blues divas either um, transitioned to or um, as in the case of Ethel Waters, for example, just started out with. Um, I'm sure Gay will be addressing herself to that uh, into the conversation. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's interesting that Ma Rainey's getting all the attention now because she was the least known of the of the blues singers in terms of performing fame at that time in the so, sort of the media capital, which was New York. Um, so that's. So there are, there are many pictures of the other women that we'll be talking about, Ethel Waters, Alberta Hunter, uh, Bessie Smith, not very many of Ma Rainey. Yes, and I think part of that is due to the fact that um, these women were really not part of the Harlem Renaissance. That is true. Um, these were the women who spoke to other women who were not quote unquote educated, and uh, their audiences were rough and tumble down through the South and down through the labor camps and what have you, so that they were not embraced by the Harlem Renaissance writers, except for Langston Hughes to a degree. So they were left out, they were left out uh, of the fame. Alberta Hunter, on the other hand, she was smart. She wouldn't put up with no stuff. And like I said in my song, she didn't even bother with having beards, cover-ups to take her around. She left and went to Europe where like Josephine Baker, fame awaited her and uh, the lack of discrimination uh, she enjoyed there. But the other women, uh, Ethel Waters, Sweet Mama Stringbean, she was in New York. So that was a whole nother story. But anyways, they are all my girls. I embrace them all. Yeah. And Robert, what you were saying about uh, neoclassic blues, the CD I made in response to Martin Scorsese's film. Uh, in 2004, Martin Scorsese was in charge uh, and there was a two hour film every night during the week on PBS. So there were 14 hours about the blues and there was not 14 minutes about these classic blues women. So I had to respond. I was pissed off. <laughs> I want to uh, I want to respond to your uh, uh, to your comments a little bit, and then um, uh, direct us towards. Uh, uh, you you've prepared some songs, so I want to make sure that uh, that we uh, direct the conversation to uh, to those songs. We'll probably start with. <clears throat> Uh, with Alberta Hunter. Um, no, actually, I think we should start with Ma Rainey. Um, but let me respond to your comments a little bit first. Um, these women, the reason that I focused on them and the reason that, you know, these are the women that we're talking about and there are other important blues divas uh, from that period of time, Clara Smith, Ida Cox, um, Mamie Smith, who start, kicked off the whole craze it became a surprise bestseller and really kicked off the whole, what was then called race music uh, category of, uh, of recording. Crazy Blues, in its first few weeks of re after the release, it sold like 80,000 copies and blues records don't even do that today. Um, I, I think it's really important to note that the last verse of Crazy Blues says, I'm going to make like a Chinaman, go and get me some hop. That's opium. I'm going to get myself a gun and shoot myself a cop. Lord, I got them crazy blues. And it might have been just because Black folks were hearing a Black voice on record. 
or it might have been about the messages contained. It was kind of ironic uh, that Ma Rainey, uh, she was she she came somewhat late in the blues craze because the uh, uh, the other singers that we're talking about had already been signed. Ma Rainey had been performing the blues for two decades, but she was one of the last to be signed. She wasn't signed uh, uh, until 1923. Once again, because her fan base uh, and her greatest fame was in the South and farthest from New York, even Chicago as commercial centers, she was, um, she was, uh, the la- one of the last to be signed on, but once she was signed on, man, she was prolific. She, in a four year period, she recorded almost a hundred sides. Unfortunately, Paramount was the, um, was technologically the least sophisticated and the most resistant to technological change. They didn't go uh, in electronic uh, and, um, throughout her recording career. So consequently, this is one of the things that really uh, contributed to uh, the long time it took for her to be rediscovered as the powerful and foundational artist that she was. Her her recordings, even in a remastered state are difficult to listen to. So when you were educating yourself about the blues and listening to them, uh, when you went back to these early women, who were the ones that you became aware of first? Oh, well, first, of course, Bessie Smith. You know, she was the empress and she had more carryover than anybody. Uh, she lived long enough to live through the depression and she was moving on into Ten Pan Alley songs. So she has a, a, a wealth of uh, material and you can watch how she grew and how she changed. Uh, I first became a best aware of Bessie through Nina Simone. And Nina Simone is my uh, number one influence. Uh, Nina is playing the beginning of Sugar in My Bowl. And she whispers over the intro, Bessie Smith, y'all. And when she said that, I knew I had to go find who Bessie Smith was. And so when I heard Bessie do this song and I started listening to her material, I was blown away at all the vocal techniques that these women's, these, these different women introduced to music, singing ahead of the beat, singing behind the beat, doing octave slurs, growling here and there, syncopating, um, moaning. Oh, Ma was the number one moaner of them all. And as you listen, I will try to, to quote some of their stuff. You know, I, I stick it, I, I take what I learned from them and I try to use it without Im- imitating them. But Ma, for example, just loved to moan. And part of her beauty as a vocalist is that she didn't use vibrato very much. She sang dead on straight. And I mean, she was country as they come, but she had all the stuff in between. And what you really have to know about all of these women is that they weren't just singers. They were also actresses because a lot of the settings were in a vaudeville kind of tent show. And uh, she knew how to act, she knew how to dance, she knew how to sing, and each one of them had big mouths, and I don't mean physically just a big round mouth, but they could fill an auditorium. There were no, there were no, uh, uh, a tent really, because there were no sound systems back then. So uh, as I studied mom and studied how she used her voice to get on top of each and every band she worked with, it was just amazing. Just amazing. On that neoclassic blues CD you're talking about, Ma Rainey, I have five Ma Rainey songs and perhaps one Bessie and one Alberta and of course a couple of Lucille Bogan and and what have you. 
but Ma was just a, a she's the one who stayed steady in the blues. You've prepared a, a Ma Rainey song for us, have you not? Well, kind of, sort of. Because as you pointed out to me, you, you, you told me uh, Blues on Blues, mm -hmm. which is really her version of Careless Love. And I like to do Careless Love because most everybody knows that song. It's a song that's withstood the test of time. <clears throat> and I like to say that everybody and their mama has done it. When I first learned this song, I learned it from Ray Charles. Wow. And when you really get into it, it's a woman's song. So what I'm going to do is I'm using the same tune that Ma Rainey used, but I have taken verses from different sources to make it my own. And that's the nature of the folk process. You take what you need and take what you want and, and use it like you want to. So I want to sing this song about careless love, uh, a la Ma Rainey. And I'm going to uh, stand back up. I like to stand so I can just put a little motion in it. Okay. All right. Love, oh love, careless love. Love, oh love, careless love. Yes, love, oh love, oh careless love. Can you see? What careless love has done Love, you fly through my head like wine Yes, you fly through my head like mine You know you wrecked the life of many poor gal and you spoil yeah you spoil this life of mine because you know once i wore my apron low i said once i wore my apron low well, it's once I wore my apron down low And you'd follow me through rain and through snow But now I wear my apron high Oh, now I have to wear my apron high Well it's now I wear My apron up high Yeah you see my door And you pass it by Night and day I weep and moan Yes, night and day, I weep and mourn. You brought the wrong man into this life of mine. For my sin, forever I'll atone. You know, I cried last night and the night before. I say I cried and cried last night and the night before. Well, I cried last night and the night before. I'm going to cry tonight. And I'll cry no more. They ended the song by giving advice. 
So this woman right here, she had a baby out of wedlock. She had to wear her, and when she wore her apron low, oh, the dude was following her everywhere. But once she got pregnant and wore her apron high, they'd see her door and they'd pass it by. And so now she's atoning for her sin, but she'll cry tonight and she can't cry no more because she got to raise this baby. She's got to raise this baby. So these women on stage, they would kind of act it out. And when Ma Rainey moaned, I cried last night, I moaned. She would indeed moan. And these women were not, they, they would sing in public what people felt in private. They had the power to lay their souls bare and sing about pain like that. Careless love, yeah. So they were the advice givers. They were definitely the advice givers on how to be, how to act, and how I can sing about your pain because I understand your pain. And let's put it, I have a line uh, that I use all the time. If you can't hide it, paint it red. Get it out in the open. When you name your fears, you will tame your fears. So these women, uh, they knew how to do that. And Ma Rainey was among the best. Yeah. So there you go. There's a song for you, Robert. Yeah, thank you. I'm familiar with it. But of course, I like the way you, you put together all those verses. That's the folk process. That's true. That's true. The song that she, that was of hers that was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame was um, C.C. Ryder. Well, yeah. It wasn't a song that she wrote. It was out there. She was the first to record it. Um, and that was the case with, uh, a number of songs that first came into, uh, uh, the blues repertoire. The writer, uh, the way it's spelled with the, with the attribute to my rainy is S-E-E-S-E-E. -E -E. mm -hmm. My understanding is that it's C, the letter C right. period, the letter C period. And I don't know if that's the way you have it, Robert, but... CC standing for County Circuit. Right. And, uh, it was the preacher who uh, one Sunday he'd be at New Hope, the next Sunday he'd be at Piney Branch, the next Sunday he'd be at Shadow, and the preacher rode the County Circuit. Or well, with white folks, I guess it was the judge who rode the County Circuit. But on that circuit, they'd have a woman in each little town. And right. That was the CC rider. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know that's an example of a song that 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 that's attributed to her that she was the first to publish, but predated. You know, she didn't mm -hmm. write it. It's the yeah. same with "Careless Love." You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about uh, the form of that song, the classic blues, as, a co as opposed to the other songs that that uh, you've prepared for this program. That the classic blues form, A A B. Oh, okay. Uh, well, they say that the blues singer, you know, in church, you sing a line and the choir, the lead singer sings a line and the choir sings behind it. It's kind of like, get right church and let's go home. And then the choir sings, get right church and let's go home. The lead singer, get right church, the choir, get right church, get right church and let's go home. So it's a call and response throughout. Well, they say that the blues person had the blues so bad that they sang their own call and response. So it's like, see, see, rider, see what you have done. Here's the call. Here's the response by the same person. See, see, rider, see what you have done. So the lines are A, A. And then the third line answers the first two lines. Well, you made me love you. Now your gal done come. And Ma Rainey again, it's that beautiful uh, lack of vibrato in her voice. A lot of singers these days almost overuse it. The vibrato, Ma Rainey would say, see, see, rider. So it stays right there. Other singers would go, see, see, rider. Right. The vibrato, yeah. So um, that, was, that was part of her power. And I think part of what she did for the tent show. Yeah. 
So uh, a lot of the songs also really documented history like C.C. Ryder. So you had, uh, you had the Bed Bug Blues, you had the Moonshine Blues, Jailhouse, Bessie Smith's Jailhouse Blues, House Rent Blues, the Workhouse Blues. They had a workhouse right here in Fredericksburg. The Young Women's Blues is, is even about skin color. And they sang songs about violence. So all of our history is right there. In a song like Give Me a Pigfoot, that's our history. Pardon my ignorance, but what is a workhouse? A workhouse is, uh, okay, when you did something wrong and it really wasn't that bad and you weren't going to be sent to prison, you were sent to a workhouse. So like for a woman, if she was, uh, for example, and I'm just pulling this out of the air, let's just say she was drunk in public. Well, no need to put her in jail. I'm going to put her in the workhouse and for two weeks, she's going to wash and iron clothes. Yeah. So uh, uh, they had a workhouse right here in Fredericksburg. Mm. And I'm not surprised. I actually know about workhouse blues because there was a famous incident uh, that occurred during the Harlem Renaissance. As you pointed out, uh, not, these women uh, were not necessarily part of the Harlem Renaissance. Certainly Ma, Ma Rainey wasn't. Um, Ethel Waters was. She was the most, most urban of these women that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Bessie Smith uh, sort of kind of graduated into it because of her talent and the reputation that she established for, her, for herself. Um, she was particularly, she crossed over and uh, she was championed by a, uh, a white, white writer and publicist of the Harlem Renaissance by the name of Carl Van Vechten. And Ve Van Vechten invited her to um, come to one of his interracial parties. It was quite daring for the period. She wasn't thrilled to be there. <laughs> Um, and she sang workhouse blues to the audience, you know, it's yeah. sort of a way of saying, <laughs> this is my experience and you have nothing in common with that. You know, just because someone can't read or write very well doesn't mean that they're not brilliant. You know, absolutely brilliant. Um, part of Bessie's beauty, vocalists usually come in two kinds. There's the musician vocalist, like a Billie Holiday. She only had a rep uh, she only had a range of about an octave, but she sang just like she was a trumpet or an instrument, and she knew where to leave the gaps and how to do the runs and what have you. So they are the musician vocalists, and then you have these vocalists who are like storytellers. Mm. Omar Rainey was a storyteller. Mm -hmm. Gaya Malola is a storyteller. Bessie Smith did both, mm. and she did both very, very well. Mm -hmm. yeah, she was a piece of work. Uh, those beautiful photographs you see of Bessie, Carl Van Vetch, he, he shot them. That's right. Shot them. Which one of Bessie's songs did you prepare for us? Well, well my favorite, uh, Sugar in My Bowl. And this is one of my favorite songs. And I have you know uh, the ending of it. They're basically Bessie's words, but of course I had to make some of them mine. That's the folk process, you know. Tired of feeling lonely. I'm tired feeling blue how I wish I had somebody to tell my troubles to seem like the whole world's wrong since my baby's gone I need a little sugar in my bowl I need a little jelly between my row I could stand some loving baby oh so bad I'm feeling so empty. I'm feeling so sad. 
need a little steam heat on my flow. Maybe we can fix things up uh, so they'll go. Oh, what's the matter, baby? Come sing your mama's song. I need some sugar in my bowl. I ain't fooling. I want some sugar in my bowl. Oh, I need a little sugar in my bowl. I need a hot dog between my rolls, oh, baby. You've been getting different. I've been told. Move your finger, drop it in my bowl. I need a little steam heat on my floor. Oh, maybe we can fix things up. so they'll go. What's the matter, baby? Come save your mother's soul. I need some sugar in my bowl. I fool man. I want you to get down on your knees. I want you to see what you're driving at. Oh, Lord, that looks like a big black stick to me. I don't want one lump. I don't want two lumps. I need a five. How bad a sugar in my bowl. Yeah. I want to sort of salute the, uh, or, or make a nod to the, the end of the era of the classic blues and the women who promoted them um, by acknowledging that the Great Depression and the change in popular taste really brought about the end of uh, the careers of uh, many of these women. Ma Rainey had to retire. Uh, Alberta Hunter continued her career in Europe, but transitioned to another style of singing, as did Ethel Waters. Bessie Smith was, as you pointed out, she was so talented in so many areas, and she was able to negotiate a transition to a more popular swing style. John Hammond produced her last recordings before she died so tragically in 1935. Yeah, if we look at the four women we were talking about, Ma Rainey actually went back home down in Georgia and she ran uh, three movie theaters right. after her run with her tent shows and her, her stardom. And then Alberta Hunter, she came back home to the United States from abroad to take care of her, oh, by the way, Alberta Hunter uh, worked during World War II um, the entire time. And then she came back home to take care of her mom. Mom died. She got a nursing license right. when she was like 70 years old. And uh, she went to work as a nurse. And then Bessie Smith was in the accident. And the fourth person was- Ethel Waters. Ethel Waters. And Ethel Waters. Uh, went on to become a TV star and then a star with gospel music with uh, Billy Graham. So all four of them went on to another life except Bessie had passed. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> but one of the things that, one of the songs that became uh, a signature song of the Depression, even though it was written in 1923, was right. Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out. Right. Uh, would you sing that for us, please? Oh, sure. Okay. And also it was written by Jimmy Cox, who was a white vaudevillian. And we think it was about the Depression, but like you said, it was written in 1923 and recorded by Bessie, and it was one of her biggest hits. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stand back up <clears throat> and channel Bessie and talk about what the what it must have felt like to endure the depression or to endure a situation like the pandemic that we're going through right now. Yeah, it's hard. It's about hard times. Once I lived a life of a millionaire 
Spend my money, honey, I didn't care. Taking my friends out for a mighty good time. I bought them bootleg liquor, champagne and wine. Then I began to fall so low. Didn't have no money and no place to go. I have to get my hands on a dollar again. I'm going to squeeze it until the ego grins. Because nobody knows you when you're down and out. And in your pocket, there's not one penny. All those friends you used to have. You don't have any soon as I get back up on my feet again. Here they all come, say they're my long lost friend. Oh, Lord, without a doubt, no man can use you when you're down and out. I mean, when you're down and out. Oh. When you're down and out, ooh, ah, now you don't have any. Mm. Here they all come, so they're your long lost friends. Lord, it's strange without a doubt. No one can use you when you're down and out. I mean, when you're down and out. Yeah. My partner in Sapphire, Ann Rapson, used to always sing that song. And whenever she was introducing it, she would always say, I have never been in this situation. It's a beautiful song. But every time I, I've been in, in down and out, I've always had friends around me. And I would like to make the same kind of testimony this evening that I've had good friends to pull me through. And I hope that's been your case, Robert. And during this pandemic, we've made it. We've made it. We've Congratulations. Made it. Me too. I think one of my private theories is that the reason that the foundational role that these women's played in establishing the blues as a genre was kind of erased and forgotten was because they were business women they were just, they were performers they sang songs of alternative sexuality and about being independent of men or taking revenge on i mean they really claimed an independence that you didn't see so much in other parts of american culture and then later later uh, stars of the blues we're mostly men, um, and I don't, uh, but one of the examples of how dominant women were in establishing the blues was Bessie Smith's first hit, written by another woman, written by two other women. Yes. Alberta Hunter and Lovey Austin. Yes. Yeah, um, basically Alberta wrote the song and then she needed somebody to write it down. And Lovey was a piano player and she wrote it down for Alberta. And I'm so proud because Alberta Hunter was a slick woman, a smart woman, and she kept, she kept her royalties, unlike a lot of the other um, women of the era. And I, and I said before that Alberta is, is who I'm gonna be when I grow up. Alberta continued performing until she was like 85 and she was sassy and classy. And this was the first, the song she wrote and it was Bessie's first recording. Yeah, it's a tad redundant musically, but I'll give it my best shot. Again, it's one of those blues songs that has a, uh, a, a, an intro that's different than the body of the song. Mm -hmm. 
Gee, but it's hard to love someone when that someone don't love you. I'm so disgusted, heartbroken too. I've got those downhearted blues. Once I was crazy about a man, he mistreated me all the time. Next man I got has got to promise to be mine, all mine. Trouble, trouble, I've had it all of my days. Yeah, trouble, trouble, I've had it all of my days. I believe that trouble is going to follow me to my grave. Yes, I walk the floor. Ooh, I wring my hands and cried. Oh, I walk the floor. I wring my hands and cried. I had them downhearted blues, and I just couldn't be satisfied. Hey. You know I ain't never loved but three men in my life. I tell you again, I never loved but three men in my life. Was my father, my brother, and the man who wrecked my life. Yes, he mistreated me. He drove me from his door. That man, that dog, he mistreated me. He drove me from his door. But the good book says, honey, you got to reap just what you sow. Hey, it might be a week, it might be a month or two. Yeah, it may be a week, it might be a month, it might be a month or two. Oh, oh but the day you quit me, honey, uh, is coming home to you. Now I got the world in a jug. I got the stopper in my hand. I got the world in a jug. I got the stopper in my hand. The next man who gets me has got to come under my command. Oh, yeah. Alberta wrote that. She don't play. Alberta don't play. She don't need no beards. Beards. She don't play. Yeah, so she wrote that. And Bessie recorded that. And, of course, Alberta got all the royalties for it. Yeah, she's a smart woman. Smart little cat. You know, that is... Uh... I wish she'd I wish she'd written more lyrics because there are a couple of lines out of there that are that just really jumped out at me. You know, one is uh, there I ain't never loved but three men in my life. You know, my my father, my brother, and the man who wrecked my life. That just like that just hits you across the face when you know when you hear yeah. that for the first time. Yeah. When I when I sing it live, I I go I ain't never loved but three women in my life. <laughs> one of my sister and that gal that wrecked my life. Yeah. And then that that I forgot, I, I forgot one verse. Uh, it's so repetitive musically, uh, but, but she the, said the words are interesting. Oh, pardon? The lyrics are interesting. They're really, I mean, that final one about uh, yeah, I got yeah. the world in a jug and a stopper in my hand. It's, uh -huh. it's yeah, it's poetry. Come, come on, come under my command. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's a, that's a, that's that whole equality thing. That's that whole, they were the first feminists without us calling them that, but she did, they just said, you know, uh, they're dealing with gender equality all the way through every song that was ever done. It was about gender equality. So um, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to start uh, uh, wrapping this up. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I want to thank you for participating in this. You know, it's one thing to have a conversation. Uh, I came from, we both come from an academic background, so we know how dry talking about music can be without any performance of it. So I, uh, we really avoided that. It yes. was wonderful having you perform those songs. Yes. And thank you for inviting me. It's, uh, it's just wonderful to see someone else who loves these women like I do. And uh, I thank you for that, Robert. The, the stuff endures because it has intrinsic value. You know, the history has intrinsic value, the performances, the songs. And it's great that you're, uh, that, that you're carrying on. I, I have a question for you. Is there, a, is there a generation behind you that's taking on the work that you've been doing musically? Um, I really don't know. I, I, I meet with uh, several young black women who are blues singers, but whether they have explored the um, blues of the 20s, I'm not sure, but they will. I know they will. Yeah, I know they will. And that's part of the goodness of just the movie uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Yeah. Right. Once again, uh, thank you to Gay and her technician, Queenie, right? Do I have that right? Yes. <laughs> thank you. Gay, till we meet again. This has been okay. a delight. Thank you.